Hello, I'm Nel Donata, artist and designer from Croatia. And in this workshop, Draw Your Own Inkblot Creatures, I will show you how to create abstract and organic ink splatters such as these, and then turn them into weird and interesting imaginary creatures such as this or this and all of this requires very basic skills you don't have to be an artist you don't have to have any drawing skills it is appropriate for most ages i recommend it for school age children and adults and if you bring want to bring in younger kiddos in please keep an eye on them because uh, this can get very messy so it is recommended that adults supervise this workshop from start to finish. And it can be also a fun family activity, or you can do it solo. If you're watching this program from your home, this can be something that you do during the afternoon or during the breaks just to keep things interesting. So if you don't finish your works uh, before the workshop is done, don't worry, you can just continue working for the remainder of the day as the Futuricon program unfolds. So if this sounds interesting to you, uh, come join me by my drawing table and let's get started. First, let's run through our required materials. Of course, you will need some kind of paper to create your drawings on. And if you don't have anything else but regular copy paper, that's fine. Uh, copy paper is rather thin. So this one is 80 grams per square meter. That's just regular uh, copy paper that probably most of you have at home or in your home offices if you're currently working from home. And it's nice and clean. It's just the right size, but it is kind of thin. So you have to be careful if you're putting a lot of ink on it that it might go out on the other side, but we'll address that in a bit. The kind of paper that I'm going to be using is slightly thicker. So it has 240 grams per square meter. That is three times thicker than the other copy paper that I've just shown you. Uh, and this one, since it's slightly thicker, there's less of a chance that it's going to, the ink is going to go through out on the other side and mess up my nice white desk. So that's what I'm going to be using. But of course, just use whatever you have. So I'm gonna take some of these papers here. And of course, if you're into drawing, you might use some kind of drawing paper, or sketching paper, but don't use your fanciest paper. So don't use your Bristol boards, don't use your expensive Canson uh, pastel drawing paper or something like this. Just use very basic, very uh, slick paper that is quite good for ink. So this is also, this one has 180 grams. That is just fine. It, it's not going to, probably won't, uh, ink won't go through on the other side as easily. Uh, so this is by Kohinoor. It's a, a pretty cheap Czech brand that I was able to find locally. But of course, if you have some other store brand or cheap brand nearby, you can use that. So that's paper for you whatever you have. Now ink is another essential material that we're going to use. First type of ink that I'm going to be using is India ink. India ink is your very basic cheap ink that is used uh, for school in art class, but also it's used by adult artists. Uh, the reason art is so India ink is so versatile and art is because it is quite cheap. So this bottle cost me less than two euros. It is readily available in most art stores, hobby stores, and even uh, like uh, drug stores like Mueller and similar stores. And it is waterproof. So it is permanent, it, it dries 
waterproof. So you can go over that with whatever other paint or correction fluid you have and it won't mess up your drawing because it will be stuck to the paper. Uh, now the downsides of India ink is that it, if it spills on stuff, then it was going to be harder to clean. So be careful uh, if you have a desk that's too nice to get ink all over, you can use a protective sheet. Uh, you can use old newspaper or you know something like this. I have some leftover sheets of packing paper always when I'm painting or you, you can use some old uh, plastic tablecloth if you have something like that. Uh, but be prepared to let it get ink stains all over it because it can't be helped, especially if we're splattering ink around, you might have a lot of little ink dots uh, around. So if you don't like that, if you don't like the idea of getting permanent ink on your clothes, on your desk, on your tablecloth, on your whatever you have on your desk, then I might suggest an alternative and that is fountain pen ink. Now fountain pen ink is not waterproof most of the time. If it is, it is going to say that on the bottle. If it doesn't say that it's waterproof, then it is not. 99% of the time, it's not. Uh, this is Pelican uh, fountain pen ink, all readily available in Europe. So it's a cheap brand. Don't use the fanciest ink. Don't use your Sailors or your, um, I don't know, Parkers or I don't know, maybe Parker has cheaper ink, but basically there are some prizes that have very fancy ink, very expensive, don't use that, use, use cheaper ink. This is all about fun and experimentation and we don't wanna spend a lot of money on that. So India ink, if you're comfortable using something that may leave permanent stains on your clothes and, and elsewhere, uh, but you can always like put an apron on or, or wear an old black t-shirt and fountain pen ink if you want to have the ability of just throwing it in the, in the washing machine and having everything come out clean. The other thing that we need is, is not absolutely necessary, but it's definitely going to help is some kind of a straw. Now you can use a regular plastic drinking straw or paper drinking straw or metal drinking straw. I don't have any of these at home, so I'm going to disassemble this pen. And sorry, the, the camera is kind of slow to focus. Okay. I'm going to take out the innards of this pen and it is hollow on both sides. So it's going to work well as a straw. Uh, Usually with straws, the thinner, the better. If you don't have a straw, maybe you have some kind of a plastic tube lying around or, or something else that you can use like a straw. So basically you need a, a thin hollow object to force your breath through so you can get stronger airflow from the other side. You can also just blow directly with your mouth. If you don't have any kind of straw right now and you just wanna get into the workshop immediately, then uh, don't wait to get a straw, just uh, use your mouth. And I'm gonna be doing some of that too. Uh, but then, you know, maybe it's it's not gonna be as a strong of an effect as if you would be if you were using a straw. It's less precise. But I totally remember we were uh, we were doing that in school when I was a kid, and it was a super fun experience. Uh, so you can just blow through your mouth. Uh, something else that I recommend that you have to complete your drawings are some kind of some kind of a black marker. Now here I have an array of different pens and markers. So I have, uh, these are basic flip chart markers. So these are just bullet pointed black markers. You can find it in any uh, office supply store and maybe even supermarkets. I don't know if they have some kind of office supply aisle, they might have these too. Uh, that you can use a permanent marker, but these sometimes leak through paper on the other side if you press too hard. So be careful with that. So this one has a chisel tip, so I can do kind of thinner lines when I put it on the side and do really chunky thick lines when I 
pull it this way. This one has a strong smell. Some people like that smell, some people hate it. So maybe that's uh, <laughs> something to think about if you're choosing between different markers. Uh, this is something similar, but it's kind of more, I, I suppose, art intended. So it has a dual tip, a medium bullet tip, and it has a finer tip. So this one is really versatile. I think I'm gonna use this one because I have the option of both doing finer lines and thicker lines. And this happens to be also permanent, so waterproof, um, might leak onto the other side and all that. These are so-called fine liners or uh, fine tip markers. This one has 0.4 millimeters, so a fraction of a millimeter. Uh, this one is not waterproof. This one is, this one is a Japanese brand and it is, I think, a quarter of a millimeter. So super, super thin for very fine details, but I don't think I'm gonna need that one for, for this exercise. It's just too, too thin. And this is, okay, so this one is not a fine liner. This one is also a bullet tip marker, but it has a thinner tip, 1.5 millimeters. So it's good for details also, if you're not making those details too tiny. It's by Faber-Castell and it is one of the pit artist pens. They have all kinds of uh, different tips for these. So these are a bit more expensive, uh, but these other ones um, are, are a lot cheaper. Okay, so let's put that on the side as well. Now some things that you may need are not absolutely required, but would definitely be useful if you had some, is some kind of white paint or correction fluid or marker or other writing utensil. So I don't have a correction fluid at all in my home, which is weird, but uh, I just don't tend to use it. But if you have any kind of like pen correction fluid, you know, in those little bottles with a little brush inside, that would be very helpful to have. Uh, I wish I had a bottle of that lying around. Other useful things are white markers. So this one is a quite worn out. Uh, Posca pens, they're very available worldwide, quite popular, so you might be able to find that too. Uh, this is a Pilot pen, it's one. It's a little thinner. This one is a, has like a wider tip. So white markers, uh, white pens. This is a Uniball Signo white pen. I use it a lot to draw and write over dark surfaces. So quite useful if you want to make tiny details. If you want to uh, paint wider areas, you might use correction fluid or you might use white gouache or tempera paint. So this is just basic uh, paint for the kids use in school. This one is quite cheap. You can find those for, you know, a couple of euros, a, a euro or two in, maybe even in a supermarket. I think they, they're quite available wherever uh, kids art supplies are, or school supplies are sold. And Another thing that I have that I might use, I might not, this is white acrylic ink. It's not actually ink, it's basically fluid acrylic paint, but in many ways it acts like ink. And I can use that to white out the details uh, for this. Uh, and for this, I would need to use some kind of a brush. So I do have a small brush nearby if I need it. Uh, just a regular small round brush, not, not the thinnest one, but uh, let's say like a medium to small size brush if I need it and so that, that there's that and something else that you might find useful but you don't absolutely need is uh, a regular brush just to pick up paint from the bottle because some bottles of ink like this one, they have this little eyedropper thing and you can just press it and scoop up some ink and drop it directly on paper, which is great, very useful. Uh, but mine doesn't have that. Mine just has some kind of a plastic stick inside. So I might need to use an eyedropper 
or a brush to get that ink out of the bottle and onto the paper. I'll see, I'll, I'll test out both just to see what that looks like. Okay, so uh, if you hear any weird noises, uh, my upstairs neighbors are dragging chairs around, so uh, that that is the noise that you might be hearing. I apologize, I can't do anything about that. Hmm, what else? Oh yeah, uh, if you're using a brush or, or a dropper, eyedropper, or something else that you don't want to mess up with ink, having a jar of water would be helpful. I'm gonna pour some water here just so I can wet my brush occasionally. I don't have to wash it completely, but I do like to just kind of swirl it around in water so the most of the ink comes out because as I said, India ink is permanent. So you don't wanna leave that for too long on your brushes and other materials because it's going to damage it permanently. Uh, but if you can just wet it occasionally, then you will be able to wash it later more easily. So we have our ink, we have our paper, we have other utensils. Uh, yeah, another thing that might be helpful is something to wipe off stuff with in case you have a spillage accident, which can happen when you're working with ink. It's um, it's not unusual. So here I have a very, very dirty paint rag. This is what I use to wipe my brushes off when, when I'm cleaning paint or when I spill stuff on my desk. Uh, this is something that I soak it up with first before uh, cleaning it up with some detergent. And these are just wet wipes. These are cosmetic wet wipes. You can also use the ones uh, that are used for cleaning the kitchen. So whatever you have on hand, it's just, it's very convenient because it is wet, so it's going to clean off uh, more easily than a dry rag. But this is better for soaking up things. But whatever you have, if you have a sponge or, or um, anything that you normally use to, to clean your house, that's gonna work. So I'm just gonna leave this to the side in case I need it. I hope I won't, but you, you never know. Ink can just be super messy. Okay, um, well, let's get started with the, with the actual content of this workshop. I'm gonna take uh, one piece of paper and I'm gonna take a bottle of ink this India ink and I will put some, I'm gonna put a little drop. Like this. So I'm gonna just apply it randomly and just return the rest of the ink into the bottle. Okay, I'm gonna leave the bottle on the side so I don't accidentally knock it over. And now, you can use your mouth and just blow directly into this. And it starts moving around the paper. In a very random fashion. And you can also use your straw, so I'm gonna Keep doing this with the straw next. And you can see that I'm getting a lot of little branches. It's a, a bit more easier to get this level of detail with a straw. So I'm just turning it around. Okay, well, I don't know yet what this is, but I'm gonna leave it to the side and move on to the next paper. So you're gonna need some room around your work area so you can leave your papers to dry because you need them to dry completely before you can move on to um, the next step or almost completely.
Uh, but India ink dries pretty fast, so that's not going to be a problem. So I'm going to leave this here on the side. And I'm going to take the next piece of paper and keep on working. So what you might do, you might put several drawings on one piece of paper. So let's say I want to put a couple of drops here and then a couple of drops here. And these are going to be two drawings. Just cleaning off my eyedropper for a minute so it doesn't get all caked up with ink. So again, using my straw, or you can even just let it run around for a bit like this, let gravity help you. Uh, I'm finding I'm getting too many straight lines this way, so I, I don't want so many straight lines. I want it to be more organic. Sorry if I run off camera for a bit because I, I can't look at my camera and blow into this thing for the, at the same time. So oh, I'm already seeing something like a creepy bird here. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm not gonna add too many details because or maybe maybe I'm gonna add some detail here. Yeah, that's that's nice. Uh, yeah, uh, it's hard for me to look at the at the camera screen and and at the paper at the same time. So if I if I just move my paper like this, I'm gonna come come back really quickly. But it's basically very very easy. You just spill some ink and then you blow into it. So I hope you're getting started with yours now. Don't wait for me to finish. I. Okay, so a drop of paper, a drop of ink just landed on, on another piece of paper right over there. Funny. Uh, start working on yours, you know. Uh, this is, ima uh, I imagine this as you following along, so don't wait for me. Just, just work alongside of me and... So that when I get to the next step, that you can follow along with the next step too. So if you're still watching this and not doing anything, take your piece of paper, Take your ink, drop some on the paper, start blowing into it frantically, and uh, you know, um, just try making these silly little ink spills. Okay, so if you have any respiratory issues, you might find yourself a bit of sh short of breath. Uh, I'm finding myself a little short of breath right now, although I'm, I'm usually not having issues with, with breathing. So if this is too hard for you, then just spill ink in different ways. You can just drag it around with a brush, you know, do something else that, that doesn't require you to um, use so much air. Because, <laughs> you know, even I need to take a break a couple of minutes and because I might get dizzy, and you don't want to faint while doing a crafty workshop, right? So I'm just going to take some ink and do a little, just a little swirly motion. Not too much, but you know, you can do that. You can do just running scribbly lines across the paper that can work you don't you don't have to necessarily do do this but it is a very cool effect let's be honest and it allows for a lot of shapes that are kind of looking animally or insecty, you know? Okay, so this one, 
I don't think it needs any more work. So I'm gonna also leave it to the side to dry and try a next sheet of paper. So I'm doing a lot of these because I wanna have some choice because maybe not all of these are gonna end up really uh, nice. Maybe some of them are, I, I won't know what to do with. And I have to complete at least one drawing on this workshop so I can show you what, what I'm doing. So this is that drop of ink that landed through air and it's still, and it's still a drop. So funny. Um, not funny maybe, but strange, definitely. So I want you to go and do like four or five or maybe even more of these because then you'll have a lot of choice to work on your next drawing. Maybe, you know, when we're looking at these, we're gonna be finding some strange shapes, some shapes that remind us of creatures. And if you're not inspired by a shape, then, you know, don't force it. Just go and find another shape that are, looks like something to you. And maybe you'll come back to these other ones later, or maybe you want, maybe you're just gonna throw them out or cut them up and use in some other art project, whatever you wanna do, it's all fine. So I'm um, gonna just do something like this with a brush. Spread the ink around for a bit to get more interesting shapes. Maybe I'm gonna pull this one up here to get kind of longer shape. And now, Okay, I'm already seeing some, some interesting shapes here. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> getting out of breath here, so I'm just gonna pick this up because I want this to try quickly. Okay, so here I'm seeing some kind of a, like some kind of a mechanical angel figure, like this is a head and this is part of the wing. Uh, like from one of those dystopian video games or something, you know, like a, like a killer robot with, with angelic wings or, or what have you, because it's very scary. Or maybe it looks like a bit like Shrike, Shrike from Hyperion. Uh, this here, also seeing a bit of a head here, but maybe I'm just gonna turn it around. Hmm. See some kind of a bovine creature. Like this is a body, this is a tail, these are some legs, and this is a head with a big trunk. Like an anteater or, or an elephant. But it's very strange looking, maybe like a dinosaur or, or some kind of alien creature that evolved in, on a different planet, but it has some of these features like like the big mammals on earth have what if I turn this around oh I also sound now see a mouth here like teeth this could be this all could be a head I'm kind of reminded of that guy from 
from uh, Star Wars prequels. The flying dude who had a mechanic shop where Anakin Skywalker worked. Hmm. It reminds me a bit because of this head shape and the wings. And I'm just gonna turn around stuff, you know, because when you're turning the drawing around, you, you see different images and, you, and they don't all, all have to be in the same direction. Like you can look at this uh, blob in this orientation and then you can put this one on the side and they can all be either on the same paper or you can cut up the paper so you can have two different images with, with different orientations. So just keep turning it around and I look for shapes, you know, like, like you're looking at a Rorschach test and you're trying to see some shapes and maybe you can like put it further out. So maybe I'm just going to lean back and look at this from a bit of a more of a further viewpoint to maybe see some things that I haven't seen before. Yeah, this could also be a head. So look at this, it's like a big nose and the, the lower jaw and these are the teeth and this is an eye. Wow, this one is so interesting. Like which, whichever way I'm looking at it, there's there's something else coming up. So I'm gonna have to decide which which way to complete it. But, you know, I'm, I'm seeing interesting things. That's That's good. So, But this one, you know, I'm not very inspired by this one. So maybe I won't even finish this one. We'll see. We'll see how much time we have. So we're at about half an hour already. So better work quickly. Let's see what we have in, on these other ones. So the, this, I already saw some kind of a bird head creature on, on this side. If you turn it around, I mean, this could be a body of something and I could draw some kind of a head here if I really wanted to. So that, that's also an option that you completely add a whole nother shape. And you can totally do that. So these are just meant to spark your inspiration, to get you into some imaginative mode of thinking, but, but you don't have to completely rely on what is already on the paper. You can alter this drawing as much as you want. Mm. I think I'm gonna go with a, with a bird on this one. And this one here. Yeah, I don't know. So this could also be like some kind of a head and some kind of a body, but I'm not, I'm not getting any uh, immediate visual images right now. So I'm just gonna let it be and maybe I'll, I'll remember something later or maybe I'll leave it as is. This one, hmm, 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 hmm. It is like some kind of a butterfly creature. So definitely something winged when I'm looking at it from this orientation. There could be two things, like a bigger thing and a smaller thing. Like this could be Like two, two creatures from the same species and they could all both have wings. I'm looking at it like, so this is one wing and this is the, the back wing. And here also this might be one wing and this might be the other one. And I don't know what this is, but <laughs> we'll, we'll fit it in somehow or maybe just um, cover it up with some white paint or correction fluid or something. Uh, when you have extra bits that you don't like, that's what we're using these, these whiting out tools. So you can cover up details that are like too much, that are crowding out your image, that are making it harder for you to, 
to get a nice shape uh, and also to add and emphasize details on the shape itself. So for example, if I wanted to add an eye or teeth or some kind of uh, shading or some kind of texture, I could do that with these white pens or, or white marker and just uh, have it be like a little detail that's added on top of this. So that's definitely, you know, you don't have to use all of the black areas that are on the drawing. You can change them in whichever way you like. Okay, so these are now drying. They're still quite wet. You can see if I lean it to the side a bit, there are some pools of wet ink here still. So I'm going to need to wait for a bit until these are completely dry so I don't ruin my, <laughs> my markers and, and other supplies if I go into this while it's still wet. So what you can do if you don't get to complete your drawing during this workshop, you can just continue as you're watching other program, you know, just let the, the videos play and you can keep on working on your little drawings. Actually, that would be really nice to, to have you do something creative while you're watching and listening to other speakers. That doesn't mean that you're not listening to people. You can listen to people and draw at the same time. I like to listen to podcasts a lot when I'm, when I'm drawing or creating something crafty. So I'm gonna leave these to dry for a bit and then finish them as, as they have dried. Okay, so some minutes have passed, uh, so these should be all dry by now. And I have five different drawings on three different sheets of paper. And I will just pick one and finish it so you can see what I'm doing, what techniques I'm gonna be using. And I'm probably gonna finish just maybe two or I don't know, see how, how this one goes first. I don't know. Uh, this is also, uh, since I'm working with pretty unexpected results, I can't plan this. This is all impromptu and experimental like yours are going to be. And you can follow along. So if yours still haven't dry yet because time is, uh, <laughs> time has passed on this side of the video and you're working in real time, uh, you can just uh, finish it a bit later. Or maybe if you, if yours hasn't, haven't been as wet as mine, maybe you can do this right now as well. So this one is completely dry. Again with the chair scratching noises. Anyway, this one, I've, run, I've turned it around. You can, you can just keep turning until you see something. Uh, but the simple solution for me would be to turn this into some kind of a bird creature head because it has very pronounced beak here. It has something that resembles an eye. And then I can paint this in and add a couple of details. And I can do that pretty quickly so we can get that uh, all set in this workshop video. So I'm gonna start by finishing here the outline of the beak, just to get a shape that is following this general shape. And I can thicken the lines if I want to. So I'm using a permanent marker. Uh, you can use any kind of black marker. It doesn't have to be permanent. And you can make the lines thicker. So maybe here, this is just poking out in a weird way. So I'm just gonna fill this gap in to get a solid line. And I like the little bumps. I think the, the bumps are making this a little more interesting. If I was drawing, drawing this freehand, it would all be a bit too smooth, a bit too perfect. But this, uh, uh, this experiment is actually all about kind of having things a bit wonky and weird and, and unusual. And here, 
Now I can cover this up with a marker or I could use ink. Maybe I could do that. Maybe I can just grab an ink and some brush and, and just cover this entire area. So I'm going to do that. I can take my bigger brush for that. I think it's gonna be faster than if I was just trying to cover it with a marker. So, made some interesting textures here but I will keep it simple because I can't spend too much time on this drying because I want to make a few of them so I will just fill in this gap right here and now we have a very solid shape and if I want to add any sort of details later with with a white band I can do that but generally now I'm going to just make a big solid surface. And here, where there's a couple of these tiny white gaps, I'm going to cover that too since I'm already doing the work. All right, so I just have, I can't touch this now, so I don't smear the ink around, although I mean, it wouldn't be tragic, but it would, it would be better if, if I didn't do that. what else could I add? Uh, I could add some kind of feathery structures right here. So these I like, this is, this look a bit like eyebrows sticking out. So I'm gonna leave it like that. Maybe I can remove this. So let me show you how you can remove stuff that bothers you. So this thingy right here, it's unnecessary. It doesn't add to my drawing. So I can use any of my white tools to cover it up. Now maybe, I'll see if I can get this marker to work. Uh, you can use correction fluid. Mm. Okay, so this marker is a bit dried out because it's very old, but I just lighten up that part so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. Maybe I can do that. Wait, no, here, this part, I will fill up this white area here. So it looks like a slightly closed eye, or maybe I can even kind of change the shape a bit more like this. Okay, so it, it has kind of a mean look to it right now. And now with the rest of the stuff, I can kind of make these little lines go away for a bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just wanted to kind of pull back into the background so it doesn't look as messy. Okay, what, what were we talking about? The feathery structures. I don't know. Um, or maybe I could I know, connect things like this. A kind of a reptile thingy, or maybe I can use a thinner tip and kind of make this all into these little webby structures to match these tiny things that are already here. Okay, so this marker is kind of kind of dry too. So let me just use this bigger tip, but 
I'm holding it a bit more perpendicular to the paper. All right. Well, it doesn't look like anything specifically, but I, but I just like it. I like these kind of webby structures. You know, it doesn't have to look like a real illustration. It only has to look like something that you enjoy. And maybe I can add like another structure here. And it's too smooth, see? Whenever I'm working freehand, I tend to make things too smooth. So I kind of have to try harder to make it look wonky. Okay, and I'm gonna add like a little thing here and I'm gonna try add a couple of wonky lines and then just oops a bit too thick here. Okay. You know what this reminds me of? It kind of reminds me of the Skexes from Dark Crystal. They have these very elaborate clothing costumes with lots of things poking out and and I possibly stole some of the stylistic inspiration from that. And if you haven't watched the new Dark Crystal TV series, I really, really recommend it. It is so gorgeous looking. And it's a creepy series. Um, I like that kind of thing. So if you like that kind of thing, I really recommend it. Okay, so uh, I'm going to try and move faster a bit because uh, I'm still... I want to make a couple of these before... Just make some here. So this doesn't have to be logical. Like, we're making creatures. We're not designing game characters here. We're making some kind of a movie concept art. This is just for fun. So I don't have to be careful about things making sense or being anatomically accurate or whatever. I'm just making something from from <laughs> a very abstract blob. All right, so I'm not sure what to make of this. I would like to make the beak kind of like this. No, like this. Okay. Mm. But what I need to do is kind of separate this part out. And I'm trying to do that with a gel pen, which is thinner. So. So I'm drawing like the shape of the bottom part. So this, this beak has a separated top and bottom. But that's not something that I have to do. I just think it would make this drawing a little bit more clear and detailed. And here where I need more white, I'm just gonna use this marker to fill up the area. Okay, so it looks like some kind of mean raven creature. Okay. And it needs a pupil. It needs an eye that can look in a certain direction. So maybe... Okay. I'm not sure this is dry completely, but... This, this marker thing here has still hasn't dried completely, so I'm not going to dig into that for another couple of minutes. But here we might add more of those, of those webbings. You know, like the chickens and, and the roosters have these thing hanging down from their beak. So that kind of reminds me of that. I could 
fill it up all with black paint, but then um, wouldn't have a lot of detail. And if you're into like proper cross hatching and hatching with your ink, you can use that to get these like, shadow areas or gray areas if you want. Is it dry? I don't know. Nope, still not dry. Then I'm gonna have to use this. Okay. Hmm. Ooh, okay, that works. And I'm just gonna. So this is a very blunt tool. It's definitely not great for drawing, but. Do something else. I will remove these little stubby things from here and I'm gonna leave this one for now. I don't have any idea what else to, to do with it so I'm just gonna set it aside so that it dries completely and maybe I can add a couple of more details after that but right now uh, this one we'll call it done. What else do we have? Okay, so this one I said uh, there is a way to look at this thingy like this is the head and this is the eye and these are the mouth. That's one way of looking at it. And this way of looking at it is this is a head and I could add some eyes here and these are big mouth with, with teeth and these are some kind of wings. And this is some kind of an arm and some kind of a leg or tail thingy. So this seems a bit more, e a bit easier for me to do. So I'm gonna start first by separating the head from the rest of the body by adding a white outline here. So this is kind of like emphasizing the shape of the head by just putting a line around it. And I'm going to add an eye, or well, I'm going to put the eye here, and then I'm going to put another eye here. Okay, and maybe. Add some more white areas here where the teeth are. And this part right here, it's kind of too much. It makes the, takes away a lot of attention from the drawing. So I'm just, removing some things which are just very obviously distracting from the drawing. I'm gonna decide about this one, I'm not sure. Okay, so let's let's try to add some. What can we do? Fill up these this hole and this hole and this and this and let's say this is some kind of a foot right here so I'm gonna complete this I don't even know what the shape of the foot would be great for this kind of character so if it, I'm just Okay, so let's say this is one, one foot. I'm gonna make it a bit thicker here. 
And then this one can be just like a forward wing foot. And now I'll try to put this part here around the knee. You can remove. So the blobs, they're a starting point, but you can change the shape as much as you want. You know, you don't have to use everything. So let's say this, okay, now this is gonna be wet, so I'm just gonna draw around for a bit. So it's drying here. So that. This is the knee. Hmm. Maybe I'll actually lean a bit. Okay, so now it looks more like some kind of a creature because it has standing on two legs. Um, these arms, I have no idea what to, what to do with that, but he's probably gonna need another arm right here. So maybe, maybe I'm gonna uh, continue it in this direction. And maybe I'm going to white out this. I think correction fluid. <clears throat> A correction fluid dries faster than this marker, probably. So if you have correction fluid, you're in luck. You will be able to do this a lot more easily than I am. So, gonna wait for that to dry. And let's do something about these, these wings. So I'm gonna just finish up these spooky formations. And maybe this is a bit of extra thing too, or it can be a part of the wing. Okay, we can make it a part of the wing. So just let it go down from here. This may be like another elbow thing. Okay, and now I will just connect them with these little lines. And I will add a little of hatching here, just to suggest that this is a, this area has some structure. So it's, it's actually an object. It's not completely hollow, but I'm not going to make it all black because then I would lose all the details. So maybe I can just, um, it's a little, thin lines. Try out the different ways of adding a bit of texture and a bit of... Okay, so I lost a bit of detail there. So I'm gonna need to make these a bit thicker so you can still see them. All these little faint lines.
Okay, so I went a bit fast with that, so it's quite messy, but you can you can work a bit slower and then get the details more, more right. So what I want to do here is I want to kind of make a little high hand here. Ooh, I added five fingers and maybe I should have added a different number of fingers like four or three so it doesn't look so humanoid but I'm just defaulting to that. No. So this is like going to be a little waving gesture because like he's a friendly monster. He's not a weird creature. He doesn't need to be a monster. Yeah, again, this is not so dry, so it's a bit gray out. This is some, somewhat better. Okay, now, when you think you're kind of done with a thing, then you can just go and remove all the extra bits that like this here it's connecting here. Maybe or maybe just the entire this entire thing. Gonna narrow it a bit. And maybe I'm gonna do this. And all these little tiny things. If it, the white paint or white marker or correction pen doesn't cover everything in one go, you can just let it dry and then go over once more. And the second layer will be a lot stronger than the first one. So if you're patient, then you can make it work just have to wait for a bit and then try once more. Hmm. This thing here also maybe unnecessary. Okay, uh, so uh, I don't know what else to add to this creature. You know, if we were in a live workshop, I would ask you to give me some ideas to tell me, you know, you could add this or that, or, you know, you can maybe, I could maybe turn this into a horn. You know, like, oh yeah, this could be like a little, ooh, it's too wide, but okay. And maybe this can also be some kind of a horn. Form. Just suggesting a line here and then add these little parallel lines. Kind of suggest the form of the horn. And yeah, you, you could tell me what you see and I could tell you what I see in your drawing. And so together we could come up with some really clever ideas and designs. I'm just going to add <laughs> these eyes make him look so ridiculous but okay so that's one creature uh, so the second creature done uh, yeah now uh, I'm gonna move back to this one and just just um, this a bit thicker which was still wet the first time. And I will add a tiny bit of glare in the eye. Because that always makes the drawing look more pop. And maybe my one here. Oh, I like that. And now maybe I could just go 
if I wanted to do some more, some more details. You know, this is a very silly drawing, so I don't know if, if <laughs> I could add more detail to make it look, you know, more like some kind of a creature design. Uh, but here I could, for example, go and add some feather textures, maybe with, with a white gel pen. So if I can get this thing to write, you know, maybe doing something like that. So this gel pen is able to get a super thin line, which is very helpful if you're trying to draw details. But not as helpful if you want to cover up a bigger area or cover up some colors, uh, like bigger stray paint, stray ink. Okay, so uh, I don't know, maybe I'm ruining this. Who knows, maybe it was better before. But this is just an experiment. Oh, yeah, like the eyebrow thingies. And here, I'll just suggest the edge of a nostril here. So it looks more like a, like some kind of a bird. Okay, uh, so I hope that through these drawing demonstrations that you've gotten about the idea of what to do with your drawings, which are completely different. So of course they're going to be, you're gonna have different designs, different uh, ideas, different vision of what you want to draw. But I just wanted to show you what techniques you can use to complete your drawing and to add something that is unique and original to your skill set. Uh, and of course, this is something you can do just to play around or maybe to generate ideas. If you are actually working as a character designer or want to be go into illustration and something, exercises like this can help you to uh, kind of uh, build your imagination, to work on improving your visualization and invention. Uh, but also sometimes they're just fun to do. You can do them with your family. You can do it uh, with, uh, I don't know, if you have to babysit kids or something and you don't know what to do with them and how to entertain them, you can show them this and I'm sure you will have lots of fun together. So that is it for this workshop. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, if you want to share what you've done, you can just tag our uh, Instagram or Twitter or Facebook channels, and you can use the Futuricon hashtag to share your inkblot creatures. You can also tag me. I am at Nelchi on Instagram. So I would love to see your creations. I would like to see how you get on with this. And of course, if you have any questions, I will be available in the chat channels. So I'm here to, to help you with um, any troubleshooting or, or maybe if you have questions about any of these materials, how they're used, you can just uh, message me or, or, or write a comment on any of our channels and I will make sure to get back to you with some useful info. So thank you for taking part in this workshop. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.